Hey, this is Helen Paradise from SoCal, and you are listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How's it going? <laughs> you have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what, what, what seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the, in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? He ate two feet before we nerfed. But listen, LaBernia, shut your face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. And just like that, we are into the second hour of the Barbecue Central Show where we talk about only the most important live fire barbecue and grilling items that have taken place over the last days, weeks, and months, depending on where they're at in the news cycle. Show airing live every Tuesday night we'll do from it 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern. Podcast will start tomorrow, our number one Wednesdays, our number two on Thursdays, and we'll talk about what's going on Friday here in just a second. Still to come on the show this evening, Cosmo from Cosmo's Q, rubs, sauces, rubs, rub sauces, rubs, and sauces and rubs. Ray Pepiat from Oklahoma Joe's will close out the show this evening. We say good evening to those of you watching the show tonight through one of our audio slash video streaming platforms. You can go to Facebook and Twitch slash BBQ Central Show to watch, and you can also watch over on YouTube slash RD Rempe, where we do have the weekly chat. And getting you up to speed on the question of the four main barbecue meats, which is your favorite? Currently, 39% of you are saying that brisket is the winner. A very close 30% is ribs, and then pork shoulder after that at 17%, and chicken at 13%. Currently, my favorite of the four is chicken. I think chicken are great. Chicken is a blank canvas. If you have new rubs and new sauces that you want to try, you can lay a nice smoke profile on the chicken. You can put it, you can put your new rub or your new sauce or a combination of all of that on the chicken and really get a true taste of what this new rub and sauce combination are or just independently from each other. Hard to do with brisket. You don't want anything, well, me, I don't want anything sweet when it comes to brisket. However, ribs and pork, completely the opposite. I'm going to trend a little bit more on the sweet side. I'll do vinegary on pork shoulder, especially for the pulled pork sandwich. I'll also go vinegary more on the sauce side for the ribs. I'm not an overly sweet rib person. But right now, uh, chicken is good. Now, maybe in a couple weeks when we get out to Houston for a quick run, unrelated, we might hit some uh, Pinkerton's barbecue. Maybe we'll go to Truth like Robert Moss was talking about, get some real Texas barbecue, and maybe that'll change my mind. But as I sit here in the Bomb City, USA, Bomb City, USA, you, David, Cleveland, I am a barbecue chicken guy at the moment. Coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less this coming Friday, episode 269, taking you back to February 2nd of 2013, so 10 years ago, and being featured this time around is one of the best competition barbecuers to ever light a fire, especially if you are talking about FBA or Florida Barbecue Association events. Definitely on the short list of best ever in that sanctioning body. He also got into the sauce business and has had great success there as well. Of course, I'm talking about the pitmaster of Swamp Boys barbecue team, Rob Rub Bagby. Yes. I think if you were to go around to the cooks, both in the Kansas City Barbecue Society and the Florida Barbecue Association and ask what kind of person Rub is, 100% of the people will say he is the best person ever. And they will also say, most of the time, if Rub's at an event 
Everyone else is trying to grab reserve for the weekend because it's really going to be tough to get the Grand Championship away from Rub that day. So if you haven't made his acquaintance yet, you'll want to check him out this coming Friday. And by the way, it does appear that the Swamp Boys barbecue sauce is still available for sale. Looks like there were a few different flavors, maybe three or four. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe our pal... Friend of show Jim Elter from Sweet Smoke Q is actually the company that packs that sauce. Don't quote me on that, but I believe I remember Jim saying that in a previous interview. So I hope you enjoy this particular segment. And don't forget, you have to subscribe to the show podcast feed in order to get the best of show on Friday, just like you need to subscribe to the feed if you're not a live viewer and you look to consume the show at your convenience, which is the way most of you do anyway. Also, if you would like to hear a past guest or segment that might be lost in the show archives, at least in your estimation, shoot John an email and let him know to pull it out and get you a show going. J-O-N at the BBQ Central Show dot com. That's J-O-N at the BBQ Central Show dot com. So we have a few different updates here. Number one is the new website construction and launch. I have nothing to share on that. There is a growing percentage of me that believes I have been swindled out of a minimum of $750 from this particular web place. I can't say for sure yet, but if we're just going off of gut instinct and gut feel, I think I've been jammed up. I don't think this new website is ever going to show up. It's going on three and a half to four weeks. Communication a couple weeks ago, I said, was intermittent at best, and it might have ticked uh, down a bit from being mostly radio silent to every now and again. We get above board, get a little bit of a conversation going. Usually, it's text messages. I still don't believe this company is in California, not for one second. I'm not going to give the name of the website yet because in case this guy named Nick, which I doubt his name is, Nick, is uh, yeah, A, listening live, which I doubt it. He's too busy spending my money. Or B, they actually produce the website and I like it. My expectations aren't high. My current website is a piece of crap. It's old. It's outdated. It's visually unappealing. It's very unsexy in all of the ways that a website could possibly be unsexy. So to get it updated at a at a cost, what's the old sales saying? If you want it quick and you want it good, it's not going to be fast. If you want it quick and fast, it's not going to be good. Like, which two are you going to pick? So I wanted it cheap and good. So obviously, I'm caught with it's not going to be fast. And believe me, it's living there. It is definitely not fast. However, I will make sure that I reserve full blast until the guy just goes completely ghost or tries to drum up some other weirdo charge, and then I'm just going to have to step away knowing that I just gave this guy money after the... Oh, it's potentially aggravating, but we'll leave it at that. But you don't care about that. You want this update. What's that? The cat piss update. Uh Uh-oh. That's right. So as I said Tuesday last week... That upcoming weekend, which was just this past weekend, I was going to be putting my handyman skills together and fashioning a cat piss protector for the highly coveted and widely unavailable Behringer XR18 mixer. And if I go to the camera here, this is what the uh, stage looks I found a cardboard box. And there it is. Underneath that cardboard box is the mixer. You can see uh, towards the top there. Um, see, I don't want to wreck the camera. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there it is. So at the top, you can see I drilled holes for ventilation. But that's it. Uh, like right underneath that box where that cord is laying is the cat piss protector. It's working very well here, you know, like four days in. Now, look at this. There's the Cleveland Guardians piss blanket that the cat was 
taking a leak on before I fashioned that cardboard masterpiece protector, which, by the way, I'm thinking about going into business and making those for a whole bunch of stuff you would like to keep cat piss away from. Uh, I set out, because I'm a, a trickery guy, I set down the Guardian's blanket right there in order to try and trick the cat to piss on that. So, I've really... Oh. Yeah, that's going to be good enough. So I've really gone out of my way to get this cat tricked. And I want to take a second to send a special word of thanks to official Minnesota embedded correspondent and fellow cigar passionado Jeff Andrizzi for the trail cam, which has allowed me to pinpoint which shithead cat is pissing around my equipment and let me tell you, for as smart as that cat is, that cat is equally as stupid because I put that Cleveland Guardians blanket down and I have that cat on tape or pictures taking a piss on it. Well, the joke's on you, dumbass. There's no high piece of electricity or there's no high priced piece of electric equipment underneath the blanket. You dope. You're just pissing on the blanket. And who cares? See, it only took me a year to be smarter than the cat. Thank God. All right, but enough of that. Hopefully, that's the last of cat piss updates here in 2023. Although, there's another cat right over here that you can't see, but he's not the pisser. I got the pisser on tape, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, if magically, I have three cats by next week. As our friend Eric, the actor, said from the Howard Stern Show to Johnny Frado, you know what to do. You know what to do. Some of you will get that. Cosmos Q is ready to go in the green room. Before we get to that, I'm telling you that week 30 is in the book. Now, I was just having a little back and forth with our friend David McDowell from davidleans.com slash bbq. And he said, hey, I noticed your steps were down this week. However, happy to see you've picked up a fourth day of weight training. Look at me. So that's going to lead to another conversation once the show is over to talk about steps and what the check-in photos look like, where the diet is. So a lot of things staying the same. was able to put on a couple pounds of muscle, hopefully, but we'll see what happens next week, well, whether I plateau out again or whether I start to continue to add, and then we got to evaluate where that is. Because as David said, way harder to put on muscle than it is to take off fat. Fat! So, we want to make sure that we're doing all of this the right way, so I will need David's counsel. Luckily, he's widely available, so I'll send him text messages. Maybe we'll consult over the phone tomorrow. We'll see what happens or what I need to do. And we'll go from there. You should be starting it too. DavidLeans.com slash BBQ. That's DavidLeans.com slash BBQ. It doesn't break the bank. He holds you accountable. He meets you where you're at. And look, I've been reading a lot of articles online now saying... If you aren't going to start with your health, especially if you're a captain of industry or you're leading a team, you're only setting yourself up for ultimate disaster for everybody underneath. Take your health into account first and work at it. You can inspire other folks. DavidLeans.com slash BBQ. That's DavidLeans.com slash BBQ. We're back with Cosmo right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. This portion of the show being brought to you by Pit Barrel Cooker, the most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet, currently available in three sizes, a host of accessories to complete the Pit Barrel cooking experience. Doesn't matter if you're just a beginner or a savvy vet. The cooker you want to add to the arsenal, no doubt, pitbarrelcooker.com, and tell them the Barbecue Central Show sent you. My first guest in the second hour creates some of the most popular rub sauces, marinades, injections on the market today. He has been a successful competition barbecue competitor. And let's not forget a world champion in the SCA steak cook-offs. 
we race to the hotline and welcome back our pal, Cosmo. Hey, Cosmo. There's no Cosmo there at all. Look at it. Wait, there's Cosmo. Hey, now. Hey, what's up, brother? You were like frozen for a second. I did the whole run up and then you just had like the same look looking down. I was like, "Uh uh-oh, he's not there. But now we're (laughs) back ready to rock and roll. Cosmo, last time you were on the show, we talked about what it might take for you to sell the whole Cosmos Q empire. Six months later, which is now here in middle of February, on the lover's day of Valentine's Day, so I appreciate the time you might be taking away from whatever lover you have uh, potentially waiting in the wings here this evening, you're still here. You're still Cosmos Q. You're still best-selling rubs, sauces, marinades. But have you gotten any suitors between last we talked? No. No? None of that. None of that. But we're we're, we're, we're currently not actively, you know, checking. You're not actively checking, but... Are you always on the listen? Well, yeah, we're always on the listen. And, you know, there there have been some people that, uh, you know, have uh, have approached us. But, you know, we really enjoy what we're doing. How long how long do you see yourself in this part of the business? That being the, the, the accessory business of rubs, sauces, marinades, soaks, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's funny. That's a great question. Uh I don't see myself doing too much different, you know? I'll always be in this in some way, shape, or form. Mm. Um, We never know what, uh, you know, what's coming down the pipe or what could potentially come down the pipe. So I don't ever want to be one of those guys that say, you know, never or always, Mm. you know? Um, But uh, this is my passion. This is my calling. This is, you know, this is what I was made to do. Do you feel obligated to, let's say, keep people employed? And do you ever worry about or does it ever cross your mind that perhaps the passion can burn out, but your loyalty to others ends up being an anchor of some degree? Yeah, I I think that's true for uh, most entrepreneurs. You know, you the people, you know. It's different when it's not just you, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I heard somebody say one time, you know, he, he's self-made. And I just don't know. I personally don't know anybody that's self-made. You know, there's there's a host of people that you surround yourself with that help push, pull, drag this, you know, whatever it is, you know, to the next level. And uh, loyalty, I'm very big on loyalty. Very, very, very big on loyalty. As a matter of fact, um, her turnover here is, I'm not going to say it's none, but, you know, it's its extremely minimal. Meaning I have uh, two, two of the people with me uh, have been with me since, you know, we were working in my shop, hmm. in my garage. So I'm very loyal. But with that being said, you know, <laughs> so I'm, where, I'm, I'm, I'm picking and choosing my words wisely if you can't tell. so here's, here's loyalty and then yeah. here's I don't know something else how if loyalty is really big for you like what does it take for somebody to either lose their loyalty value with you or it, it will, or can it, you it can you hang on to somebody that has been Daggum loyal, but they're really a boat yes. anchor when it counts. Um, no, no. Uh, boat anchors I don't put up with. All right, at all. No matter the loyalty. Um, no matter the loyalty. All right, love you to death. But if you know, if, if and I, I always give this analogy in our business. You know, we're all in a raft, and we're all paddling. And anybody that's ever been on a raft ride, that's you know, that's the closest you'll ever come to killing somebody with a with a, with an oar <laughs> you know because you know it never fails you got you know 
one person rowing way too hard and three others, you know, not rowing at all, or you know, you're just spinning circles. And, and the key to getting down the river or whatever you're traversing is I don't need you to row harder than everybody else. I just need you to row the same as everybody else. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you know, if you, the harder people row, if you can raise that, uh, that capability, that's what you want in your company. Um, so if I look around and you're not rowing in the raft or you're screwing around making a sandwich or something like that, then, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, we'll toss you overboard. Cosmo from Cosmos Q joining us here on the show. If you didn't know, Cosmos Q, the letter Q.com is the website. Some of the best, most popular rub sauces, marinades, wing dusts, uh, 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 an incredible number of products that he's got going out, all very successful. I meant to ask you in the lead here, the YouTube poll question this evening is of the four main barbecue meats, which is your favorite chicken ribs, pork shoulder, or brisket. Where do you weigh in on that? Um, for me, it'd be brisket, then ribs. All right. Well, believe it or not, I can't believe it. A Barbecue Central Show exclusive news update. This is Greg Rappi reporting for the breaking news desk here in Cleveland, Ohio, the city that breaks the most live fire breaking news across the nation. Nay, the globe. There is a new poll update with 39% of the vote now in the lead. Ribs has overtaken brisket, and it's only taken an hour and 20 minutes. Brisket has been in the lead since the start of the show, but Ribs is now kind of running away with it. We'll see how that trends out here through the rest of the evening. So how is business? The last time we had talked, the live fire industry was just getting over the best two years that anybody had ever seen in the history of ever as it relates to barbecue and grilling. But then the bottom falls out. Things are starting to correct at a rapid rate. How do you weather the correction in the industry? You know, um, the one thing that we try to stay focused on more than any is customers and nurturing that relationship. Um, we have been very blessed. We did well uh, through the pandemic and after the pandemic, and that's not the case for a, you know a lot of industries, uh, not only in the U.S., but around the world. Um, but I also think that there's a shift coming in. You know, I heard you talking about, you know, uh, eating healthy and, and things like that. And a lot of people don't know that you can eat barbecue and eat healthy. Yeah. And I think a lot of uh, a lot of homes are moving away from eating out as much to more cooking at home. Mm. And if you're going to cook at home, you may as well, you know, you know, cook with the best. You know, get you some cosmos. So, do you, would you say that in in the pandemic, people are forced to stay home and cook? Then the pandemic relaxes, people go out because they haven't been able to go out, so they're getting this uh, bug out of their system. And then, as you talk about, well, maybe we liked cooking at home. Maybe we like being able to save some money or make it the way. Maybe we came really good cooks. We're realizing eating out doesn't have the same cachet, doesn't have the same great taste that it once did because we've been able to hone the skills and they're just preferring to stay at home. Uh, no, I do think uh, I do think a lot of people are preferring to stay at home yeah. and couple that with um, the industry. I, I know there's uh, it, it, it's really difficult to find help right now. We went to a restaurant the other day and it was we sat there for almost two hours and they had all the managers in the kitchen, some of the wait staff in the oh. kitchen. And they, they told us, they said, we can't find help. And, um, you know, unfortunately when that happens, usually the first thing to go is the quality. Yeah. And then when you go out and you spend that much money and you go, man, I could have made this at home, but better, you know, then you, you know, kind of is what it is at that point. Do you still have new products in the hopper at this stage of your products career? We do have new products. Um, one thing that we did do post pandemic is pull back on uh, releasing them as fast as we are, were. Um, one of the things that we've noticed is just because I have a great idea doesn't mean the consumer base wants it. 
So mm-hmm. we started something uh, called the Cosmos Lab. Uh, currently, it's called the Test Kitchen. We're going to switch the name over to the lab um, just because it makes more sense to us. And it's a private community where we do monthly drops of flavors that we don't have on our site. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, uh, last Friday we launched our, um, uh, our lab, uh, test kitchen, uh, Cajun rub. And what that is, is it gives you, it gives these people the opportunity to buy it. And then what we do is we put it on a keep or kill list. So it's, a you get a vote on it and we want to hear like what your actual thoughts are, you know, let us have it, you know, is it, if it's good, let us know if it's bad let us know if it's something you would change, like give us your feedback, your actual feedback. Mm. And uh, that's something that we're in our second month on and it's really doing well for us, but it, it, it gives a sense of uh, um, inclusivity to everybody. Meaning, you know, it's, it's just not something I pulled out of my, you know, pulled out of my rear. It's something that, you know, I may have pulled out of my rear, but we do what we call a soft launch on it and then Mm. actually get feedback. And, you know, do people want this? Is there a market for this? Is there a a space for this in all the SKUs that we have? And it's super fun because everybody gets the. It's so cool just to see everybody cook all the different things. And I I sit there and I go, oh, my gosh, I would have never freaking thought of that. Mm. So there is a chance, though, that you buy that Cajun rub, and for whatever reason, it doesn't hit the Cosmos Q benchmark to actually bring to the normal offerings portfolio, and it's a one or, or two time thing, and that's it. It's done. Hmm. It's done. What's the best product outside of this lab thing that you have going on now? But before that, what's the best product that never saw the light of day? Oh man. You know, there's a lot. I've done a lot of there's different a injections. Lot? I, yeah, there's a <laughs> lot. There's actually a lot. Wow. Um, there's, uh, I, I have um, three, really four. Um, we did a peach pork injection. Wow. That was phenomenal. Um, Why does that not come to market? The two, two niche? It, it, yeah, it's probably just a little bit too niche down, but that's not to say it won't hit the test kitchen, you know, hit the lab and actually get feedback on it. I really enjoy injecting pork with, you know, obviously our injection, but, you know, with peach, I'll use peach nectar a lot yep. in there. So um, that's one product. And then we have a couple other wing dust that, uh, geez, there's two of them. Um, man, I hate to, drop the name just in case they come out. Uh, but one of them's a cheddar bacon and one of them's a, uh, a Korean, Ooh. a Korean barbecue. Wow. And they're freaking phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. What's the best selling item in the portfolio right now? I would have to say that would be a toss up. It, you know, it's funny you ask that because it changes week to week. The mm. data that we have on our company is, insane i mean absolutely insane um side note you know we've showed this to some some different uh people and they just sit there and they look at me and they go and they're like how like how did you guys even think to track this stuff I mean, and it's very, very specific and we don't have it for, you know, just months. We have it for years. Hmm. Um, so it does change month to month, but the staples, obviously the rubs, the rubs are, you know, killing it. The sauces are killing it. The sauces are killing it so much. We can barely even keep them in stock. And we're, we're like, we're trying to get ahead of this, but it's, it's turning into, you know, half million dollar POs. And it's, you know, that's a lot of money to th- just throw out on the, you know, out on the table. So the sauces, the, the rubs and the sauces are definitely the leaders. Mm-hmm. Now, out of those, um, uh, the go-tos, cow cover, dirty bird, Texas beef, killer bee, you know, those are um, 
th those are just awesome. But I'll tell you one that uh, it was actually one of our last Cosmo line rubs, our SPG, hmm. is starting to outpace all of them. Really? Yeah. SPG, it seems, is a really popular one that's been coming... I mean, it's been around forever, right? As long as I've done the show, somebody's yep, had yep. the SPG. I remember when Suckle Busters came out with their original SPG back in the day and it blew everybody's head off. And then everybody's mm -hmm. trickled one out. But that does seem to be a much more popular line of rub that people are bringing into the market here currently. And it's like one of those things that's been around forever. But uh, as we were talking like during Soundcheck, it took 10 years to become an overnight sensation. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> What's the one thing you're most oh. proud of through the growth of Cosmos Q? Um, I think making the Inc. 500. The, and I, I can't remember, 20, 20, shit, I don't even know, 2020, 2021, uh, we made the Inc. 500. Uh, I think we spot 431 on the list, which, you know, it, 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 it is the Inc. 5000. So out of the 5,000 fastest growing companies in the country, we were spot 431. Wow. And we, we would have made it the next two years, but we just didn't apply. It turned out to be, a, you know, oh. just something that, you yeah. know, took a lot of a lot of energy and an effort. And, it, you know, on the back end, all it is is just, you know, it's just a trophy you can put on your wall, you know. How does one stay above the noise in this highly competitive and what some might consider saturated market of rub sauces, injections, and all that? Um, I think keeping the main thing the main thing. <laughs> you know, uh, for us, we are 100% customer driven and satisfaction, satisfaction to our customers is the top on our list and we don't ever you know if somebody's upset we want to make sure we handle that in a way that is um you know orders get lost orders get you know messed up but we try to put systems and processes in place to keep this kind of stuff from happening but inevitably you know shit happens yep right so we just want to make sure if we do encounter somebody that's unhappy, we go above and beyond. Um, we always like to over deliver mm -hmm. to the customer. I would rather somebody say, oh my gosh, I did not expect this. Or I, you know, I couldn't believe they did that, you know, rather than somebody say, you know, they're just like any other company. They'll just, you know, take your money and, you know, good luck on the back end. And, uh, we like to focus, um, on not only the customer uh, on the front side, but on the back side as well. You selling Bill Purvis your Jambo pit? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping track of. Hold on, hold on. I'm keeping track of YouTube chats here, and somebody's saying Cosmo selling me his El Ray, and then somebody else is saying <laughs> Cosmo selling me his Jambo. I'm waiting for somebody to say Cosmo just sold me Cosmo's Q. So. Always love to, to see what's going. Quickly vet it here since Bill, I got the man right in front of me. <laughs> Bill. He yeah. cracks me up, man. So uh, you can find Cosmos Q again over at CosmosQ.com, of course. And uh, Cosmo, I love hanging out with you. I uh, would rather do this a little bit more frequently than uh, having half a year elapse before we do it again. So that's on me to make that happen as long as you have the time. But great insight as always. Appreciate the time and continued success, man. You're killing it. Thank you, brother. I sure do appreciate you. You got it. There he is, Cosmo, right there. Again, CosmosQ.com, but you already know that. We're waiting for Ray Pepiat from Oklahoma Joe to drop in, and we'll get to him here in just a second. But what do we love about ceramic cookers? We love that they are fuel efficient. We love that you can achieve low and slow temperatures for traditional barbecue meats. We love that you can get rip-roaring hot for high temperature grilling of steaks and other thin cuts, but what's missing in the everyday lineup of ceramic cookers? The real ability to do true two-zone cook, two cooking is very important to both professional and backyard cooks alike. It's the best way to manage a fire and cook with confidence. However, getting a two-zone fire and a round ceramic cooker is not very realistic. Why? Because it's round. 
and a Primo Grill. The game-changing oval design. This shape gives you the ability to execute a two-zone setup that you desire. It also gives you the other ceramic grill benefits as well. When you break it down, there's more than 60 different ways to configure the Primo Cooker, so you're only limited by your culinary imagination. And yes, they have the accessories because you love the accessories. Primo Grill Pizza, rot uh, Primo Grill Rotisserie, the Primo Grill Pizza Accessory, a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on. Like Green Mountain Grills, only sold through dealers. So find one near you. Locate that at primogrill.com. Visit the dealer. Find the size oval that best fits your needs, and away you go. Here's the bottom line. Best ceramics in the biz? Yes. Patented technology? Yes. True two-zone cooking capabilities? I'm just talking about that, of course. Multiple size ovals? Yes. Go on over to primogrill.com, find the one that best fits you, and away you go. That's primogrill.com, and follow them on Facebook and Instagram. And maybe, just maybe, I run into Nick Bauer in person for the second time at HPB Expo in Louisville. All right, we will chase Ray Pepiat from Oklahoma Joe's, and we'll see if he's back when we get back, so stick around. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. get back to a guy who has more experience giving you his opinion than he actually has cooking. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. We thank Darian. Oh, come on, I can't believe I did that. His real name is Darian because Robbie. We thank Cosmo from Cosmos Q. CosmosQ.com, the website. If you're not familiar, you're just a Getting into the Lion Fire industry, you're not familiar with those rubs. Some of the best, most popular ones out there, uh, both in the backyards and on competitions. I am, of course, a little bit more partial to the Big Papa Smokers line of rubs. That's just my personal uh, flavor, but I have tried Cosmos rubs and sauces and marinades, the, the soaks back in the day. I don't know if a lot of you realize how far... Darian and I go back almost to the back to the beginnings of the show. Like Darian was with me, I believe, before I even started the live shows. So he was an advertiser when it was just a podcast, I believe. If it wasn't that, if it was, yeah, I think it was. So we go way back, probably well over 10 years, 11 years. So great to see the business that he's doing and uh, so happy that he could stop by and play a little catch up there. Uh, gang, I don't remember the last time there was this much new stuff getting released into the live fire market this early in the year. Next Grill, Solo, Blackstone, Traeger, Gosney, and my next guests have all brought new things to market recently. Last year, we talked about the Ryder DLX pellet cooker, and we also talked about the Charbroil Edge, all a part of the same parent company, WC Bradley. But tonight... We are learning about the latest cooker from Oklahoma Joe, the Marshall, and here to talk about it is the Director of Product Management for Oklahoma Joe, first-timer Ray Pepiat joins me. Hey, Ray. Hey, Let doing? me try it again. Good, Ray. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. You were looking a lot like uh, Cosmo there from last segment, but now we got the right picture up here. Appreciate you taking hey, the time to join me here this evening, Ray. So before we get going on the Marshall Let's get to know you a little bit of background uh, professionally and eventually how sure. you marry up with Oklahoma Joe. Yeah, um, I, you know, I joined the company not too long ago in September. It's been outstanding. I mean, what a great company to join. Um, fun team, fun product development, um, really working with a great brand at the end of the day. I know you've had Joe Davidson on the show before. Um, you know, we talked to him just the other day. I mean, what a great guy. And, you know, the way he built the company on a solid product that really delivers um, on real smoke flavor. And that's really what we do when we develop product. We really want to deliver on that real smoke flavor and just let people get that smoking success. Can you imagine being a younger Oklahoma Joe back in the day and getting <laughs> into your barn, welding 20 or 30 barrel smokers, taking them to the Oklahoma State Fair, where the hell he took them to, 
selling them right. all right off the floor, as it were, and then also having an order for 200 more, and now you got to figure out what to do. Can you imagine that success? I, I feel like I did it the hard way. I mean, he, you know, he grew up in the oil field, I think. It just like you said, welding these heavy duty rigs that just never wore out. I mean, they're the type of product that you pass down to your kids. So, I mean, we really, you know, we take that to heart when we develop product. Um, you know, like this, this one we're going to talk about tonight, this Marshall Centerbox smoker grill. Um, man, we didn't cut any corners on this unit. It's a fantastic unit. And um, it really does live up to that, that brand that um, Joe Davidson built. As I had mentioned in the intro, Ray, W.C. Bradley has some very big brands under it. Oklahoma Joe, obviously, Charbroil, who's been a guest here on the show a couple different times, and Sabre, of course. What's it like working with brands that could, in a sense, also be seen as competitors? Uh, You know, it's it's good. We all kind of have our lanes that we play in. Um, Sometimes we bump up against each other, but that's, you know, that's good. A little internal competition helps out. Um, I think it helps us deliver um, better products. And the one thing that's really nice is um, when you mention those strong brands like Sabre and Charbroil, I mean, there's just, there's just so much, um, you know, intelligence in the organization that these guys have been working on these products for a long time. So it really crosses over. We work together and we just want to provide the best experience, you know, for our customers. Uh, Ray Pepia joining us here on the show uh, from Oklahoma Joe's, the director of product management. During the day, I sell Peterbilt Class 8 trucks. And uh, for mm-hmm. those that are a little bit truck nerdy, you would know that Packcar is our parent company. And another brand right. under Packcar is Kenworth. So much like mm-hmm. you know, you have brands underneath your umbrella, we're running up against the same thing. However, we have shared engineering on some of our right. newer cabs. So, for instance, on our 579 or 567, if we're looking at vocational, the cab platform is the same, whether you're looking at the Kenworth side of things or whether you're looking at the Peterbilt mm-hmm. side of things. As you look at WC Bradley, is there a lot of shared engineering or does that stay pretty separate? There is some shared engineering. Um a lot of it works together. Like I said, there's a lot of guys that are just experts and, you know, thermodi- thermodynamics um, that there's just, we're able to tap into each other's side. Um, but um, we really try to focus on Oklahoma Joe's on our side in our little world. And um, we have a lot of fun. I mean, we cook a lot of food. Um, we, we try these products. We work on these products. We try to get out there and see what the customers are doing. Um, we just did a lot of research in the field and we, you know, the customers are great. They'll give you honest feedback. You know, if something works, if something doesn't, hey, I need more shelf space. Um, why do you do this? Why don't you think of this? You know, so it's it's just great getting out and really getting that feedback from the end users. The Marshall is the topic this evening, Ray. So how long has this one been in the works? It's new. Um, it's, it's new to the market. It's been in the works a little while. It's an outstanding unit. Um, we just really did launch it um, this year into the marketplace. Um, You know, what's neat about it is it's really, it's a smoker and a grill. So um, it's the best of both worlds. I mean, at the end of the day, and I mean, you could buy this unit just to sit in your backyard or on your patio. It looks so good. Um, I mean, it really is a nice looking unit. Um, It's got that central, you know, mounted firebox underneath the unit. So it, it, it sits down below. It's nice and compact. It's not like a traditional offset, which works very well. But, um, you know, this just gives you more flexibility. Um, it gives you just great even heat and even smoke flavor. Just right, the heat comes straight up from the bottom of the unit. Um, it's just simple to use. And uh, it's a big unit, too. I mean, there's a lot of square inch on the cooking grates. Um, you know, thick, heavy duty cast iron in there, you know, holds in that heat, helps you with the sear. Um, so man, you can, you can go to town on it. You can, you can grill, or if you want to go for a long smoke, you can do it easy, control those dampers and uh, open up the dual smoke stacks two temperature gauges. I mean, it, it is fully loaded. Aesthetically to me, the cooking chamber has a lot of similarity to how the Ryder DLX looks like in my uh, back patio right now. But to me, what makes this unit unique, and you just alluded to it a couple minutes ago, is that center firebox. So why do you go with this style? Is it a clamoring in the market, or just somebody just have a, a harebrained idea and you decide to make it come to life? 
You know, it's funny. Um, Joe Davidson actually even worked on a unit like this, he said back in the day. But it's, it's, there's a lot of people that don't have the space for, you know, a traditional offset. And an offset smoker works great, but it does pull the heat across, mm -hmm. you know, the barrel. And this, we just literally put the firebox right underneath the unit so that the heat comes just even straight up from the bottom. Um, it's just even heat and even smoke. And then you can just control it with the, uh, the dual stacks and it's just very simple to use. And then if you want to grill, I mean, it's, it's great. It has an adjustable char charcoal rack inside so you can raise and lower it. Um, and just simple, simple to use, simple to use, easy to clean up. It's fun. I assume the marketing department wants to figure out a target customer for this particular cooker. In your estimation, who do you think your target is? Yeah, we really think it's somebody that um, that enjoys, you know, cooking outside. Um, somebody that we call it, you know, somebody that's kind of a wants to dabble in it, you know, and spend some time. Um, it's still you still have to, you know, manage the heat source a little bit, but it's very easy to do. Um, it, it's not like the, the, the heat's going to get really hot on you and then, and then, then, you know, lower on you. So you can keep a really even heat flow, um, good airflow control as well too. And it's just easy to use, um, in the sense that you can also grill on it. Um, so you're not just limited to just smoking. So really that, you know, customer that kind of wants the best of both worlds. Oklahoma Joe lands on a $699 retail price. As I, the longer I'm in this industry, I'm trying to figure out or I'm learning that sometimes there's companies that are building things to a certain degree, but then they have to stop at a certain point because they also want to meet a price point. Like that never used to even cross my mind as I was just getting into right. this. And especially when you're talking to some of the more elite manufacturers out there for those offsets and some of the other things. So uh, why mm -hmm. six ninety nine? You know, it's, it's, it's where the product kind of just priced out at. Um, we really, you know, you come to a point to where you go, do I just, do I, do I cheapen the product to hit a price point to hit a retail price, you know, in the marketplace and drive more volume. And when we take a step back and we go, no, we're going to, we're going to do what's right. Um, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to thin up the steel. It's, it's heavy duty gauge steel. Um, it's built to last. Um, I actually assembled one of these over Christmas with our head of R and D. Um, and we were in the back shop and we were assembling it. And when we got done, we kind of stepped back and we said, wow, that's quite a smoker. I mean, you know, you don't, you feel like, wow, that's, that's really worth it. I mean, that's, that's something to say, you know, there's not a lot of products where you have that satisfaction, um, when you put it together. So that's really what we strive for at Oklahoma Joe's. Some of the other center box units that come to mind are more known as water cookers, let's say. So a full water pan is above the firebox itself. There mm -hmm. are some other units that are open like yours, like uh, M grill comes to mind, but uh, was there any talk about putting a heat sink in between or no? Um, you know, it has a nice um, deflector inside, which just really manages the heat flow and makes it very even. You know, if you want to put a water pan in there, that's fine. I mean, that's, you know, you can kind of customize it to do whatever you want. Um, you know, that's kind of what cooking's all about, right? I mean, some guys like to wrap in foil, some like beach paper. Um, you know, you ask them, they'll, they'll give you 10 different ways to Sunday. So, or seven different ways to Sunday, excuse me. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it, it's really a good unit. It's just designed well. And, um, Everybody that's used it, I mean, we just got some reviews the other day on it, and the guy said, you know, love it. Just easy to control the temp, so it really maintains an even temperature, and, um, you know, really solid, I think, was the description he used. Ray Pepiat joining us here on the show, talking about the new Marshall cooker. On the website, at least yesterday night when I was finishing the prep here for the segment, it said, currently out of stock. So, are there any more coming in soon? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, we're rolling this to retail right now. Um, and we're working to, you know, to, to ex extend the distribution. Um, it's also sold on Oklahoma Joe's.com. Of course. Um, we just want to make it, you know, easily accessible to anybody that wants to use it too. And we really want them to have a great experience, you know, when they step into it. 
Last year, there were some OEMs that brought, let's call them hybrid cookers to the game. For example, uh, Camp mm-hmm. Chef had a pellet cooker, but then there was this additional drawer that you could drop wood chunks or uh, charcoal briquettes in to get a little bit more smoke flavor mm-hmm. onto the food. Pits and Spits has an actual offset cooker on one side, mm-hmm. and then they also have a pellet hopper on the other side with a conjoined cooking chamber. Is Oklahoma Joe considering getting into the the hybrid or multi-cooker potential segment that might be burgeoning here in 2023? Well, you know, we have we have everything, right? We have we have grills that work great. We have a kettle grill. We've got the judge, which is a traditional grill. Um, we do have pellet. The riders are, you know, work really awesome. Guys really speak highly of them. Um, you know, if you really want the true wood smoke flavor, um, you need that hardwood, right? Mm. And you're going to get that from an offset or like a center box smoker. Um, of course you can use, you know, charcoal for a fuel, but there's nothing like adding in a few lump chunks of wood that really, you know, bring out that flavor in the food. So, you know, right now, I mean, we're always looking, um, it really, what's, what's the best way to get there? Because that's really what the brand stands for is just delivering that real smoke flavor and just having that real smoking success when you use the product. When you're using the Marshall, do you use it more as a traditional barbecue pit or, or low and slow barbecue temperatures? Or are you 50-50 between direct grilling and barbecue? Or are you more of a griller? You know, I've done both. I, I will say, you know, I, I tend to... Uh, before I started with the company, I was a gas guy. I'll be real honest. You know, it's very convenient. You got there. You no hate here, by the way. I'm a huge I, you know, gas grill guy. People yeah, take a dump and, on gas grills, but I'm with you. It, I'm pretty happy with those. They they do. They do. And I'm pretty happy with mine, too. And, you know, I think there's a place for it. But I got to say, after having the Marshall, it, it it's not much of a hassle to go and, you know, fill up a chimney starter and get the charcoal rolling and dump it in there and, you know, throw some burgers on. And the flavor is just a thousand times better. I mean, even my pellet, um, it takes a while to fire up, right? To get the auger going, to get the pellets going, to get it ignited and get it rolling. And it's just, I I guess it's really, what do you want? I mean, at the end of the day, if you want that real good taste, that that good smoky flavor, um, it's worth a few more minutes, I feel like. Have you always been in the live fire industry? No, no, I've been in the power tool industry um, and in some others as well, too. But um, I got to say, this is just it. It's kind of a, been a dream come true. <laughs> I mean, you know, not many companies has an open courtyard in the in the middle of their building where you can go out and cook on products in the middle of the day. Um, you know, whether it's your products, competitive products, um, new products from Charbroil, it's it's just outstanding. I mean, WC Bradley is an awesome company to work for. Mm. Um, And it's just a really good culture. So I'm really enjoying it. When you look at the customers here compared to other lives of customers, have you ever seen a more Mm -hmm. fervent customer base than those of Live Fire? Oh, man. I mean, they are not shy, right? I mean, if you want to find out what the customer thinks, just jump on a Facebook group. Mm. And these guys, they are not quiet, right? They let you know if something's working, if something's not, why don't you do this? Um and, and they really like to mod their units. Um, I mean, it, it's impressive how they, you know, they get in there and, and they, uh, they, they make tweaks, they adapt. Um, you know, one of the ones, the clubs that I'm in is the Bronco, which is our drum smoker. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just outstanding. I mean, those guys, they just, they're very passionate and, um, man, it's, it, it's fun to hear about it. And I, I've learned a lot just from being in the clubs myself. Can it be annoying or a little disheartening to see, people take your baby in essence and then start modifying the crap out of it or if once they buy it it's theirs and do what you want no not at all i think it's i think it's neat i mean i think it you, you know they don't what's really neat about the group is they don't complain if they don't like something they kind of they make a solution for it you know they, they improve it and they mod it um some like to hold the smoke in um a little tighter so they you know seal it up with gaskets um, you, you know, at the end of the day, you probably don't need to do that, but you know, if they feel like they get a better smoking session out of it, then more power to them, you know? So that's what, you know, we really want it to be, you know, it, it's kind of your way. It, you can customize it 
And we, you know, we have some hood latches and different things to help guys get there as well too. So, um, you know, we just like it. We just want people to, you know, to get in there, have fun, get out there with the family, ha- you know, have some time, smoke some, smoke some protein, um, and enjoy life. As far as the industry is concerned, Ray, are you surprised with the amount of items that are being released right now? And I know as a whole, the live fire industry has really taken it in the shorts the last year or so, considering the two great years that had preceded that, unlike anybody had ever seen in the live fire industry. How do you see the market right now and where do you see it trending maybe in the next six to eight months? Yeah, that's a great question, Greg. I mean, it's, um, it, you know, definitely a tough year coming after the, uh, the the two years we had and we had a lot of people at home um they realized that you know eating at home was great and there was uh, some fun ways to do it um we see it picking up um we're not stopping on our product development which is really neat um you know our company's charging full ahead with oklahoma joe's so um we're bringing out some new products um we're you know continuously looking you know to what what do customers need and, and what do they want and how do, you know, we help them get that better experience. So, yeah, we're looking at connected products as well. Um, you know, they're not just for beginners. They're for experienced people, too, that really want to maintain and hold their, you know, heat as they smoke. So, um, yeah, we're just we're constantly trying to look forward and, you know, and, and bring, you know, some fun and excitement to the category and really help people get into the category, too. I had a different question I wanted to end on, but I was just thinking about this instead. Because as you talk about constantly putting things in the hopper as far as new products are concerned or offering something else or a little bit different uh, or better mousetrap, two things that are like screaming popular right now, and they have been over the last couple of years, but they're really seeing Mm -hmm. some kind of uh, real popularity right now is uh, some type of a griddle, flat top cooker, let's Mm -hmm. call it, and uh, then the high heat pizza stuff. So mm-hmm. as you're looking at it as a company, WC Bradley as a whole, where do you decide to draw a line and say, you know, if it would have been a year and a half or two years before where we are right now, we would have gotten into the flat top or we would have decided to make a pizza oven. But this is the tale. We don't want to jump in and either just be flatly ignored or be the guys that are, ah, yeah, but, you know, they're late to the game and it's really not bringing anything right. new. So, you know, why bother? Where is, does that discussion even happen? Oh yeah. Yeah. We're, um, in, you know, there's a lot of discussion on it. Um, we've actually, you know, looked at these categories when we bring a product to market. Um, we don't want to be a me too, right? We don't just want to be a, another griddle with another brand on it. You know, for Oklahoma Joe's, it really has to, you know, it has to use that hard wood and that charcoal and deliver that smoky, you know, taste. Um, flavor really. So, you know, is, is that a griddle for Oklahoma Joe's? I'm, I'm, I don't know if we can, you know, bring that to market and deliver that right now with the product. Um, the charbroil side is doing some outstanding things, um, in developments on griddle, um, that I think will really shake the market up. So, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of things we're looking at. Um, yeah, I can't get into too much detail now, Um, you know, I think Charbro was actually one of the first ones to bring out the griddle too. Um, you know, and I, and I do have to say this, even on this Marshall center box, what's really neat is, is, um, we developed like a a griddle pan and a deep dish pan that, you know, goes in very well with the unit. So it fits right in on the cooking grates. So you can have a griddle with your smoker. Um, you don't have to buy a separate unit to do that. So, um, you know, we try to, we try to bring that into our products and, you know, have it to where people can customize them and, uh, you know, use them however they want to use them. Director of Product Management at Oklahoma Joe is Ray Pepiat and the website, of course, OklahomaJoes.com. Ray, really appreciate the time this evening, getting to know you, talking about the Marshall continued success, and hopefully we can do it again soon. Yeah, thanks, Greg. You got it. That's Ray from Oklahoma Joe. Again, the website, OklahomaJoes.com. If you go to the website and you look for the Marshall at least last night, I didn't check here before we jumped on. Shame on me. They were out of stock. But as he said, Oklahoma Joe's has them on uh, sale as well over on their website. So go ahead and take a look, see what they got. And if they have one for sale, you're in the market for Center Box, which is always interesting to me. Then you might want to pick one up while you can get your hands on one and let me know how it is. Why not? Absolutely. So thanks to Ray. Great first-time guest, great first-time appearance there. Background on him, 
and what he's doing as far as product development over at Oklahoma Joe's. And I'm becoming a, a more and more of a fan. Absolutely. Love the Ryder DLX pellet grills that I got. Really intrigued on the Charbroil Edge full-size electric, which I continue to maintain is going to be one of the big market explosions in 2023, full-size electric grills. We'll see how that pans out. Head on over to BigPapaSmokers.com right now and see what they have for sale. Know that everything that is currently available has been Pitmaster approved by Sterling, Big Papa Ball himself from the award-winning American-made grills and smokers to all the rubs and seasonings. Doesn't matter if you're a backyard fanatic or a competition pro. Big Pop Smokers has something for everybody, like the rubs and seasonings. 13 perfectly balanced flavors transforming ordinary meals into extraordinary. If you're looking to impress judges or friends, it will do both and do it well. Also, owner of Granny's Barbecue Sauce. So if you're looking for a new go-to sauce that would please everybody, Granny's traditionally a powerful flavor reminds us of why we fell in love with barbecue in the first place. And yes, I did mention cookers. If you're looking for a versatile smoker that's easy to use, check out that Mac 2-Star General Pellet Cooker, Big Papa Smokers, the exclusive Mac dealer, even offering special packages. If you don't know what grill you need, call them. Ask questions. They'll steer you in the right direction. 877-828-0727. That's 877-828-0727. Or shop the website, BigPapaSmokers.com. That's B-I-G-P-O-P-P-A Smokers.com. We are back to wrap it up right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rimpy. And we thank Ray Pepiat for joining me last segment from Oklahoma Joe's, OklahomaJoe's.com, the website of course. Again, that cooker he was talking about, if you're just joining in, is the Marshall. So make sure you hit the website, learn all about that, and then you can decide if it fits the bill for you. And you might be the new proud owner of the Marshall from Oklahoma Joe's. All right, let's go ahead and work it on out as we run just a little bit over the top of the hour here, all the way back to the first hour. Meathead talked about writing that second book. In fact, he's pitching a series of two books. The Nerd. Robert Moss joined me after Meathead, robertfmoss.com, his website. We talked about the origins of King Cake and how really they have nothing to do with Mardi Gras, but now somehow associated with Mardi Gras. It was like a Christmas cake in the beginning. Second hour, Cosmo from Cosmos Q joined us. Great segment with him. Always appreciate his insights on business and the live fire industry. And of course, we... Closed it up with Ray Pepiat from Oklahoma Joe's, the director of product management out there, OklahomaJoe's.com, talking about the new Marshall Cook, which is very intriguing. All right, big show planned for you next week. We are in week number three, and I will give you a quick sneak peek on what you can expect next week. How about our friend Mike Lang from Another Pint, please? Yes. The return of who? Barbecue Bible author himself, Stephen Reichlin. And in the second hour, Susie Bullock, just to name a few. We'll fill it out as the week rolls on here. So how do I always leave you? September 11, 2001. I will never forget. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. What's up? This is JM, host of the Celebrity Grill Podcast on iTunes, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Network. All barbecue and grilling, all the time.